Right now, on to the point. Developing news. A man shot and killed near Palisades Tahoe Ski Resort after a carjacking and chase. Now the subject exited the vehicle armed with a knife. The fight not over. What's next for a sexually violent predator who could still be released in the community? A jury says former President Trump must pay more than $83 million to an advice columnist for defaming her. And counting down to Sunday's 49ers game. Boy, I feel great. And the local hero that will be honored at the match. All right, and if you still want to go to the Niners game, tickets are still available, but at a very steep price. We're taking a little bit closer of a look at that later in the show. Thank you so much for joining us. This is To The Point, and I'm Alex Bell. Leading our show tonight, a deadly shooting is under investigation near the Palisades Tahoe Ski Resort. A state parks officer shot and killed a man with a knife following a chase and carjacking that ended near the Olympic Village Inn. Our Becca Hobbegger has been at the scene for hours today. I'm standing in front of Olympic Village Lodge, Palisades Tahoe's events center and corporate offices. The Placer County Sheriff's Office still has this part of the parking lot closed off, investigating Friday morning's fatal shooting. Here's what we know so far. According to California State Parks, a state parks peace officer tried to stop a vehicle that was involved in a carjacking in Tahoe City about seven miles away. The chase ended in a crash here in the Palisades Tahoe parking lot. It's unclear why the chase led here. The state parks spokesperson didn't have any information on that or who this driver was. State Parks says after the crash here, the driver got out of the car armed with a knife. That's when the state parks peace officer shot him. Officers provided medical aid to the subject. Uh, but despite their efforts, again, the subject succumbed to his injuries and the public again is, avoid, is uh, advised to avoid this area uh, as the investigation is ongoing. The shooting happened in a corner of Palisades Tahoe's parking lot, not immediately near the resort area. So skiing and snowboarding has gone on as usual throughout Friday. The resort did not close down. We did ask why the state parks peace officer was involved in this pursuit. We obviously do focus on California state parks. Uh, that's a responsibility, but we're also uh, our officers, at least uh, they are part. Uh, they're sworn officers here in the state of California. Um, so, you know, mutual aid that applies to them as well. Uh, they're trained officers just like CHP has. They go to the academy. State Parks does say the California Highway Patrol was involved in the response as well. A State Parks spokesperson didn't have details beyond that. As for how uncommon it is for a State Parks officer to be involved in a fatal shooting. You know, it's it's not the most common thing that happens, uh, but it does happen. Uh, I couldn't tell you the last time, uh, but it's not unheard of. You know, we have been involved in officer shootings before. This state parks peace officer is on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. That's just standard protocol in an officer involved shooting like this. For now, the Placer County Sheriff's Office continues to investigate what happened here. They'll bring us more information as they learn it and we'll of course pass that along to you. All right, Becca, thank you. Tonight, a sexually violent predator could still be released in Placer County. The Department of State Hospitals is trying to decide where this man right here, William Stevenson, should live. He has a long criminal history, including indecent exposure and sexual assault. And among concerned residents speaking out today was the Placer County Sheriff. He says that he is frustrated by this process and believes the committee created to help with public and law enforcement input is not doing as intended. From our perspective, this is just beginning to feel like many other things at the state level and just a large waste of taxpayer dollars. The Department of State Hospitals insist any new information about the housing location can only be discussed in a closed meeting. The three suspects in the deadly April 2022 K Street shootout were back in court today. Matula Payton and brothers Smiley and DeAndre Martin are all facing murder charges and could possibly be facing life sentences. Today, evidence from the scene was presented. Law enforcement on scene following the shooting recalled what happened. Now, if you remember, this shooting happened very early in the morning on April 3rd, back in 2022. Six people died and 12 people were hurt. This has been described as Sacramento's worst mass shooting in its history. And tonight, former president and current presidential candidate Donald Trump has been ordered by a jury to pay advice columnist 
more than $83 million for defaming her. A jury reached a verdict in just three hours today, and it came after a heated day in court. At one point, Trump got up and walked out of the courtroom as columnist E. Jean Carroll's attorney delivered closing arguments. Trump was shaking his head as Carroll's attorney reminded the jury that Trump did not respect the verdict of a prior trial that found he sexually assaulted and defamed Carroll and unleashed vicious attacks against her. Trump's defense argued the harm Carroll says she suffered from Trump's defamatory statements is overblown. Trump posted on his social media platform that he will be appealing this decision soon. In your voice, your vote, the upcoming election is impacting a rare bipartisan deal on new border security. The deal is at risk of falling apart after former President Trump publicly slammed negotiations between Senate Republicans and the White House. They have been negotiating this bill for months, and tonight some GOP lawmakers are arguing that passing immigration reform could now hurt Trump's chances at re-election. As the clock ticks to do something about the crisis at the border, today House Speaker Mike Johnson sent a new letter to colleagues saying a border security agreement would have been dead on arrival anyway in the House if reports of its contents are true. Johnson undermining the negotiations which have come under pressure from Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump. The former president ramped up his criticism, writing on social media that a potential compromise would be meaningless and just another gift to the radical left Democrats as Joe Biden runs for re-election. Republican Senator Mitt Romney had this to say. The idea that, that someone running for president would say, please hurt the country, so I can blame my opponent and help my politics is a, uh, uh, a shocking uh, uh, development. Republicans say Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is aware of Trump's opposition, but says he's still working towards a deal. And Trump's close ally, Lindsey Graham, is trying to appeal directly to the former president. I will say to President Trump, if we can put this package together the way I hope it falls into place that you'll have more tools to secure America than you've ever had. This comes as the White House and senators search for a way to get aid to Ukraine and other countries across the finish line. They have to choose. Do they want to help or do they want to score political points? And the text of this border security deal could be released as soon as next week as immigration emerges as a key election issue this year. Voters in both Iowa and New Hampshire ranked immigration as nearly as important as the economy when asked which issue mattered most in deciding how to vote. And it comes as migrant encounters at the U.S.-Mexico border just reached a record high of 302,000 in December more than 100,000 migrants have been transported to cities like Washington, Los Angeles, and New York. Next on To The Point, no parking on highways. The CHP needs your help getting this message out. And record-breaking heat. Yeah, you heard that right. Plus the forecast for two of our big football games this weekend. And concierge medicine, why more and more doctors are taking non-traditional routes to connect with patients. Pandemic really just highlighted that or exacerbated a problem that was already present. All right, if you are headed to the snow this weekend, don't let this happen to you. The CHP says that people are parking along highways and blocking the roads. They towed 18 cars near Kirkwood over the weekend. The CHP says they have to do this when cars become a hazard for drivers and snow plows. And it's dangerous. Parking on the highway is just dangerous in, in general, but especially parking when you're in the lane. Um, that's a big no no. Plus storage fees, so it can also be expensive. So if you are going to a snow park or ski resort, just make sure you pay attention, plan ahead for parking so you know what options you have because those spots can fill up very, very quickly. All right, let's get a check of our weather. Devin, making yes. to the point history here. Well, you always see her as a reporter, but doing weather tonight for us. How's Happy to looking? be here. How is it looking outside right now? It's a little chilly, right? It is. I would take a light jacket if you're yeah. headed to dinner outside, but things are only going to warm up, so we have something to look forward to. Let's take a look at the Big Mountain Backyard. Calm conditions right now. Current temperature in Sacramento, 55, 58 in Stockton and Modesto, and 38 in Tahoe. We are seeing potentially record-breaking heat Sunday and Monday. Temperatures climb to 70. Now in Stockton, the temps are usually only about mid-60s, so we definitely might break a record there. But then we are tracking this Category 2 storm system that the National Weather Service says is headed our way. So the sun to the storm. 
We're looking at the majority of rainfall coming to the region from Wednesday night into all day Thursday. Anywhere from two to five inches of rainfall Tuesday to Friday. That turns into snow starting at about 7,000 feet for the accumulation. And then every day dropping down. So 6,000, 5,000, you kind of get the gist. And we could see snow as low as 4,500 feet in the Blue Canyon area. A foot of snowfall expected Tuesday through Friday with the potential of two feet. These rain snow conditions sticking with us until the end of the month. But great weather for Pig Bowl tomorrow if you're headed out for kickoff at Hughes Stadium. Low 60s and cloudy. A possible sprinkling of rain Saturday, but I wouldn't worry about it. Mid 60s throughout the Valley region. Headed to the Bay Area early for the Niner game. You'll be sitting mid 60s as well. 64, Vacaville, Fairfield. Sacramento Valley, we see again low 60s for tomorrow. 63 pretty much everywhere. Overnight lows drop about 10 degrees down. And then for the Niner game, fantastic weather, a high of potentially 74 at Levi Stadium and no wind. So smooth sailing for Brock Purdy, Alex. Not a bad forecast for the weekend. Thanks, Devin. All right, next on to the point, concierge medicine. It's becoming more and more popular as doctors experience burnout. And the search is on for Smoky Bear, stolen near Lake Tahoe. Welcome back. Sitting in a waiting room at the doctor's office can sometimes feel endless. And doctors say they feel that stress too. Many are now leaving a traditional path for a growing trend called concierge medicine. As Julie Koharik reports, it's giving doctors more time with patients and keeps them from feeling burnout too. Introductions. I'm Dr. Lori Burkholz. A quick back and forth in the current broken system. A treatment plan. And patients just don't get time and repeat. I was starting to feel the classic burnout type symptoms. That's really why Dr. Brooke Holtz hung up her old stethoscope and picked up a new one. Ability to create relationships with patients was disappearing. When she left the traditional hospital model, she found what she was missing in concierge medicine. So really bringing the emphasis back onto the relationship between a provider and the patient. In 2020, Right as the pandemic hit, she opened the doors Give you a brief tour. of her new um, practice. Like the pandemic really just highlighted that or exacerbated a problem that was already present. And it's a common trend among doctors all over the country. It's estimated there are between 10,000 and 25,000 working under a similar system. That's expected to keep growing. So what is it? Yeah. Concierge medicine gives patients 24 7 access to their doctors, day of appointments, and longer visits. Oftentimes that comes across then as they are not heard, they're not fully respected. Um, it operates mostly under a membership fee, but it's not just for patients who have extra money to spend. We have patients who are uninsured or underinsured. One practice won't heal all wounds. The system was broken. But it could be a bandage over larger symptoms. And rather than leaving it, I wanted to try to see if I could find a way to fix it. Felt by both patients. Or at least work within it. And providers. Now, one downside of concierge medicine is that it can cost a lot. So make sure that you check with your doctor to make sure they are covered by your insurance before making any appointments. Now on the topic of health, before you pick up a soda or processed snack, recent research is now revealing a concerning connection between ultra-processed foods and cancer. In a study of more than 450,000 individuals, researchers found with every 10% increase in the amount of ultra-processed foods that someone ate, there was a 23% higher risk of head and neck cancer and a 24% higher risk of a type of esoph esophageal cancer. Now, body fat also contributed to the risk of these cancers, but it only had a minor role. But the main point that researchers found is that the foods we choose can significantly impact our health. So make sure that you try including more more whole, less processed foods like vegetables in your diet when possible. That will benefit your health in so many ways. And there is a cough medicine recall, Robitussin Honey CF Max day and the night version for adults could cause severe or life-threatening fungal infections in immunocompromised people. So if you have used this product and have experienced any problems with it, the FDA advises you to talk to your doctor. And then take a look at this. The search is on for Smokey Bear after someone stole him from Highway 50. The U.S. Forest Service says they noticed their sign at Spooner's Summit on the Nevada side of Lake Tahoe was vandalized earlier this week. 
And if you might know where Smokey is, make sure that you call the Forest Service's Lake Tahoe Basin Management Union Unit. Excuse me. Can't believe someone took them, huh? Man, all right. Every Friday, our John Bartell takes us on the back roads. Tonight, John Bartell takes us to Southern California to tour a castle made of garbage. Mansions and even villas are pretty common in Los Angeles County, but towering above the suburban homes in Glendora is a castle, but not just any castle. It looks like there's um a lot of, uh, I don't know, what do you, is this yeah. junk or what do you Yeah, think? scrap. See, there's a Volkswagen motor in there and a toaster. Oh. And <laughs> the cobblestone scrap heap fortress is known as Rubel Castle, the dream home of Michael Rubel. He was a builder since he was a little kid. His father died when he was six and he just started building fortresses and digging tunnels. The multi-story junkyard tree fort in this picture was just one of many janky structures that 10-year-old Michael built in his youth. Scott Rubel, who's Michael's nephew, says his uncle was a half-feral child who grew up working on a citrus orchard. So Michael wanted to live in the packing house. 10 years later, his dream came true. When he turned 19, his mother, Dorothy Duell Rubel, bought the packing house and the land around it, partly to keep Michael out of trouble and partly for entertainment value. His mother was um, really into partying. <laughs> Michael's mom was an actor on Broadway and was well known in the entertainment biz. She constantly hosted movie stars and entertainers in the packing house, which became known as the Tin Palace. Jack Benny was one of them. Alfred Hitchcock, President Eisenhower, was here in 1963. Here's a funny story about President Eisenhower trying to use the packing house elevator. Michael pushed the down button and down he went, and then the fuse blew. <laughs> and Eisenhower got stuck with his head sticking out of the floor. Over the years, Michael tried his luck in many failed entrepreneurial ventures, including growing eggplants and raising frogs in the old concrete irrigation reservoir on the property. Michael pulled the plug here and there was a big spout of water came about a mile down the road and uh, frogs were falling out of the sky. When Michael pulled the plug on the reservoir and it fully emptied, he decided to start on his lifelong dream of building a castle and clock tower. There was a lot of building going on here and no one knew oh, it. Oh yeah, we built for years before the neighbors could see what we were doing. Working from the bottom of the empty 12-foot reservoir, Michael enlisted the help of artists and his nephew Scott to erect the metal frame which would become the clock tower. And we put electric winches up in the palm trees and lifted the whole thing up. So it just appeared suddenly. The neighbors didn't know what was going on in here. Michael had no money, but he had a knack for getting free materials and inspiring young artists to work for him in return for space of their own. He, so this was a shared space. So. Yeah, there's a lot of art always going on in here. So people had their own motivations for building their own little spaces. Rock by rock and junk pile by junk pile, Michael and his friends eventually finished the clock tower and the castle in 1986 all without a single building permit from the city. We had our uh, contentious moments. Despite some pushback from the city, the mayor eventually issued Michael a proclamation of good community standing, ending years of conflict and endorsing the castle as a local monument. They fought us because they sort of had to, but on an individual level, they loved us. Michael Rubel died in 2007. Today, his legacy lives on through the eyes of tourists that get to explore the castle and its many quirks. You can see all the hard work here, but what you can't see is all the parties, you know, and that's what really built this place is hundreds of friends. From Rubel Castle in Glendora, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads. That place looks full of memories. All right, now it's your turn. If you got something in your town that would be a great road trip destination, make sure you reach out to John. You can always text him at 916-321-3310 to share your ideas. All right, next on to the point, the 49ers versus the Detroit Lions. What to expect in Sunday's NFC Championship game. And for those of you joining us on the ABC 10 Plus app, here's a look at what's coming up tonight after To The Point. Well, if you have not heard by now, the 49ers are playing the Detroit Lions this Sunday at Levi Stadium out in Santa Clara. It's the NFC Championship, and if the Niners win, they will go to the Super Bowl. And tickets are still available for the game on Sunday.
but they are going to cost you. So we just did a quick refresh here on this ticket page. Uh, it looks like the cheapest ticket, about $438 right now. The highest ticket, though, $2,200, sorry, $2,200. That's not the highest, though. That's just a range. So if you're looking for like a $400 ticket, you're going to be up here all the way at the top, no doubt. Now, some of the floor tickets that we've heard are costing upwards of like $9,000. So make sure that you are paying attention to what ticket that you're buying. All right, and if you are watching this weekend, make sure you watch out for World War II veteran Frank Wright. He will be honored as a frontline hero on the field during the NFC Championship game. He has been the talk of the town this week at his Lodi Senior Center. At 99 years old, he says that the anticipation has been overwhelming. Well, I could hardly sleep that night when he said there's a possibility of seeing it on. And the possibility to see the team play on it, that's something that uh, I, I haven't seen for ages. And the, and the game starts that Sunday at 3.30 in the afternoon. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can always reach out to me and the team. Have a great weekend. I'll see Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com, or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.